Good morning. My name is Sally Ann Atwater and I am a retired priest and I worship at St Elizabeth's Church in Eastbourne. And today I've been asked to read the Gospel and to give the talk. Today's Gospel is from the Gospel according to St John. It is chapter 10 and it's verses 1 to 10. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the sheep, shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Well, that passage of scripture is often read um, almost as a standalone saying without reference to what has gone before. But it's actually part of a conversation Jesus is having with some religious leaders. If we look to the previous chapter, we see that Jesus had just healed a man who had been blind from birth. And the religious leaders had been, well, less than impressed. Actually, they were furious. Now, you might ask why. Well, the reason they gave was that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is a day of rest and to be dedicated to the worship of God. But I suspect that their anger was no less because Jesus was attracting a lot more attention than they were because he was fulfilling a role that they had neglected. What do I mean by that? Well. Jesus told them that he is the gate of the sheepfold. What Jesus is saying is that he is the true guardian, the true protector and guide of the people. The problem was the people were not listening to the religious leaders very much because they no longer trusted them. What had happened was that the religious leaders had become so obsessed with the minutiae of the law and with getting everything so right, so perfect, that they'd neglected a very important aspect of their role, which was to be guardians and shepherds and guides of the people. So Jesus came along with a message of love and hope. And of course, he was able to heal. He performed many miracles and the people were naturally attracted to him. But it wasn't just those miracles and messages, it was also the fact that they recognised Jesus' authenticity. There was something about Jesus that rang true. He was and is the real thing. He truly is the Son of God. He truly is our Saviour. His words, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, reveal that life is not only for this world, 
It is for this world, and we are to live life for the full, but it is also for eternal life. And it's because of Jesus' death and resurrection that he is able to invite us, that's you and me, to share in that full and eternal life. In the verse immediately following from today's reading, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, meaning that he knows and cares for each one of us. We are all precious to him, whoever we are, wherever we may be, and whatever circumstances we may find ourselves in. Well, right now, our circumstances are very challenging. The pandemic has taken many lives, and many more lives will never be the same again. Maybe society itself will never be quite the same again. Yet what is really interesting and I think encouraging is the amount of people who have tuned into services and talks that the churches are putting out over social media. Clearly, people are wanting to make sense of what is happening but are also looking for someone to trust. Naturally, we are all anxious at this time. So questions such as why is this happening and can God help us are being asked time and time again. People are looking for certainty and we're looking for an authentic leader, one we all know we can trust, one we can follow. And I believe that that authentic leader is Jesus Christ. Let's look at those questions. Why is the pandemic happening? Well, I think it must be very complex. There are so many factors involved in all this, but I can't help thinking that it may be, at least in part, because we human beings have focused so much on our own needs. We have disregarded the needs of other creatures on this planet. And of course, we've ins- we have exploited the planet, upsetting its natural balance. Yet, we also know that we have a good and loving God who cares deeply for us and that his desire for us is that we live as he always intended. That is, with love and respect for one another and for all life on this earth. Remember, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus wants us to live. He wants us to gaze in wonder at, on the creation and revel in its beauty, its complexity and fragility and to treasure it. Can God help us? Well, yes, indeed, he's already doing so. God works in and through his people. You will remember that Jesus recruited followers to carry out his work and proclaim his message. And his followers have continued to do that through the centuries. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to inspire and guide us. And we see this happening through the loving concern that so many people are showing towards those who are vulnerable, alone and in particular need. But, of course, there is more. God, our creator, is inspiring us to turn back to him who is our only certainty. To learn more and more about just how great his love is for us. He is the one who guards and guides us. He is the one to follow. The one, true, authentic God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer and sustainer of every one of us. Turn to him. Trust him. And so I'd like to end with a prayer. And this was written by the Reverend Canon David Adam, who was Vicar of Lindisfarne, also known as Holy Island. Holy God, when life falls apart, you pick up the pieces and refashion them in your love. 
you breathe into us new life and renew our hope and courage. No matter how great the darkness, we cannot fall out of your care. Your nail-marked hands seek to raise us up, free us from the depths of despair and the darkest hell, lift us into the fullness of life, guide us into your light and bring us to your glory. Amen. God bless you all, today and every day.